Hello, welcome back to the Luckbox podcast. Today I'm joined by James Dean. Hello. Of ESL UK. What do you think of my studio? It's great. (laughs) You like what I've done with the place? It's really well done. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I could teach a lesson to ESL. (laughs) Actually, no, this is ESL London studio. James was like, Getting it all set up while I harassed you to, yeah. <laughs> to make things That's, work. Well, we we got over the edge yes. by, by but, you harassing. But thank us. you, thank you. No, we uh, we love we love the the picture, the quality, yeah. everything, the sound. It just makes a big difference. So really, well, of course, we're that. at Yuki, right? So it's available to the games industry as a whole to come oh, in. Oh, nice utilize. plug! Yeah, nice plug. <laughs> if the games industry are watching this, <laughs> this is inside Yuki, and uh, any members can use the studio. Apparently, that's great. But don't break it because I need it for my yeah. regular <laughs> podcast. All right. But um, what we brought you in for is the big announcement. Uh, it it was uh, more than a week ago now. Yes. But it is kind of exciting to esports fans because our viewers are, are esports fans. We watch Twitch events, we watch mm-hmm. broadcasts, we go to live events. You know, we're crazy about this stuff. Um, but the announcement you made recently, I mean, do you want to tell us actually? Yeah, rather, rather than me. Uh, so it was a long time in the making. Um, it's, it's part of, so the whole funding is part of uh, the Industrial Strategy Fund uh, of the UK government. And the the concept is is that obviously um, in order for the UK to continue its economic drive, um, the DCMS specifically identified that we have to do a certain amount of things within digital culture, media, etc., sports, um, in order to to and drive things. And forward. we as a whole, meaning the country. Yeah, the country. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we for those UK. international <laughs> fans, we as the UK. <laughs> Um, and they announced uh, a, a segment of the funding uh, because I think the overall funding for industrial strategy is billions. So, um, but a small percentage uh, was put to something called audience of the future. Um, and the definition of this uh, competition, if you like, was to bid for four million pounds uh, to create uh, an idea uh, which leads into what's called a demonstrator so it's not to build a new business, it's to actually collate a, a, a group of businesses mm. and an a- academic, of course, um, to, to kind of demonstrate something that pushes the industry forward. So obviously, from an ESL perspective, we've always, you know, especially in the UK, got our thinking caps on mm. um, and we're thinking, you know, what's missing here that, you know, we can always improve um, on what that experience is for for an esports audience, and you know, I think within esports anyway, um, you know, the majority, the vast majority of of an esports audience are very tax tech savvy. They're early adopters. They're always striving for more. They've got you know a growing expectation on on a huge amount of bits of information, data, but also the quality and uh, the production value, etc. So, yeah. um, and we'd already been working with york university so i'm not sure if you remember but uh, one of the first university d- degrees announced in the uk was with york university mm-hmm. after leicester university and uh, we'd worked on a few projects together already especially around data analysis and mm-hmm. and ai and in fact at an uh, esl one hamburg what two years ago now mm-hmm. um york university were over doing a lot of the data analysis uh, for ESL um, in order to just show how new stats can be created and based on some student work and et cetera. I assume that that's Florian, I take it, yeah, who was Florian working on Dota. I mean, I'm, I've, I've been at the Hamburg events. And I've seen some of Florian's work. Yeah. It's really it's cool because yeah. it's, um, it's machine learning uh, uh, algorithms that process all the data that comes out of Dota yep. and gives you like these amazing uh, conclusions and you should do this or most people do this and giving suggestions if, if you're a player yep. and I, I don't know there's probably a lot more since then that yes. I haven't seen as well well yeah so um, we build on that and obviously we can't give away too many of okay. the secrets but um, but in terms of uh, looking at an idea for the audience of the future funding Mm. we sort of collaborated very quickly um on saying how do we develop out this idea how do we you know deliver what the esports audience really would like to see and and then the true nature of you know the esports community 
you know everything's very much in the hands of a of an esports fan um, mm. as a gamer also you know you the, the fans are effectively contributing to the entire industry directly because they're they're buying the game playing the game and watching watching the, the content so um so we sat there and we thought well one of the biggest missing things in the industry is the ability to really personalize that story and i think us as individuals we all have our own you know passions um and interests in particular genres of games um but as a fan of different teams or players an interest of different backgrounds and and elements of of data and then uh, our actual skill within the game differs as well and yeah. our depth of knowledge of the meta etc um and and law so what we quickly realized that actually this the idea of creating this one broadcast for all mm. isn't really great and we can see certainly the way in which esports is consumed as content um it's already you know far from what we see on linear television because that's a very one way sort of service of one storyline yeah. that we don't really have any way of changing or manipulating well you, you know you say that but the experience a lot of the time has gone back to oh we watch the stream yes on Twitch, and absolutely. it's like one channel and everyone's watching the same channel yep. and fine That's you're talking point. nonsense on on chat i know it changes and then there's all some some companies are, are giving the option of individual player point of views but it's quite so, rare still so it's still an entertainment so that core broadcast is absolutely imperative because mm. we're we're all gathering around and watching that live and we've got a discussion point around that single broadcast so i'm not saying that you would ever lose that main production but think about you know what does twitch now offer mm. in terms of the overlays and the chat etc um that's all about now personalizing your experience but it goes beyond that it goes far far beyond that you know think about how do i get and contextual information that's fed to me while I'm watching this broadcast on the fly in order for me to just enjoy it more. Oh, so as in instead of waiting for the broadcast to give you certain data, yeah. you can then choose to, yeah. to want to see you net worth or and what's disseminate the, what's, what's going all the on. stats on yeah, your absolutely. players. Okay. So, and then the, the second element to it is that very much so you don't want to be forced to consume this information in any particular manner. I think especially if we look at how, you know, Gen Zs and, and younger millennials are growing today where, you know, from an early age, they have access to a multitude of different devices to, mm, to, to watch and consume entertainment and information, etc. And right now, obviously, you, you've got, you know, you can watch Twitch on a, on a screen or TV or a mobile device. But mm. I think we wanted to explore then how you transition from from each device to another. Right. And and we believe that needs to be a seamless experience. So as I say, this isn't building a new business, this isn't building a new product. What this is doing is a group of companies who have a lot of experience in their own fields mm coming together to demonstrate a new idea. So once we demonstrate this idea, we hope that a lot of other companies like Twitch will say, you know what, there's something there. Mm. We'd like to talk to this group of people and actually start looking at ways to monetize that and actually develop it out into real products. Um, so there are like commercial interested partners um, already lined up behind what we're doing um i'm very interested in demonstrating and helping us demonstrate um what the idea is so I, i'm being very fluffy I appreciate yeah that yeah you, it's you've um, not you've not like nailed down a specific <laughs> thing and i've got to say when when the press release went out that the headlines were very specific about vr mm -hmm. and ar yeah i know those are buzzwords that's why they tend to go well, out on no, the headline. i mean it, i think vr vr and ar make a massive i think you know and ai as well uh, make a huge part of what what we're talking about augmented reality 
um, you know, is not new to esports even. No, or well, any, I mean, we've been any seeing podcast. it for what the last yeah. three, four yeah, years almost. Exactly. The TI always has mm-hmm. the the heroes on stage, and the League of Legends had the the dancers, which yep. were pretty incredible. And and everyone's then, doing it. <laughs> and then VR, of course, uh, you know, is just another environment to consume, you know, an, an entertainment. Do, do you think, on the subject of VR, that there is? Because I've seen implementations which were kind of cool and like they blow you away the first time you use them, but you don't tend to go back because I don't know, it's too inconvenient or you know what, the live stream is better. Exactly. It becomes these siloed kind of demonstrations become almost gimmicky in effect. They're great demonstration technology, but once you've seen it, you're like, well, it's just easier to watch it on the screen. So absolutely, it's exactly what we're talking about and but if that experience was more seamless and you mm. got more out of it so you you're getting more depth out of the vr experience than watching it on a tv or a, a screen with with overlays etc then you're going to do that if it adds real value yeah but at the moment it's like well okay i can look around the arena that's nice mm. and i could i can have some data panels over here well that, that's sort of all right um and I can go into the game. Well, that's qu- kind of cool, but that's where it really stops. It's not, it's not really adding the full level of immersion. And I think, as touching on immersion, I think that's really the point of this um, immersion. I think we all think about being immersive by the idea of the depth of our senses. So sensorial emotion, uh, sorry, immersion is, you know, that visual aspect or maybe three D audio or Maybe there's touch and smell, mm. etc. But something that heightens that experience yeah, so of, the, of, the, of the whole event. Uh, yeah. Right? So that, but mainly sensorial immersion in this context is audio and visual. Um, but of course, then there's cognitive immersion. Mm. And cognitive immersion is about how much data can we get around the context of of the entertainment you're watching, and how is that disseminated to deliver value to you personally. And that immerses yourselves. And, you know, you look at many industries um, heighten an entertainment by kind of taking that cognitive immersion and delivering an extra service or, you know, let's take the betting industry. Good example yep. for this podcast. Well, we're a betting company. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, you know, people will generally bet for fun because you think you know something that other people don't based on the data that you've been able to analyze and once you've placed that bet it becomes more exciting because you're sitting there you're like oh yeah you're invested yeah, into you're the invested game into and it's the like game. i really want this yeah. team to win it makes the whole thing kind of exciting obviously you have to be careful with it there's a lot of uh, regulation around it but that's an example of that cognitive immersion now then there's of course the social immersion so that's where we talk about how people actually communicate with each other and share things and and it creates more discussion mm. um now if you were to combine these three aspects of immersion all at once and you then personalize that and use a plenty of ai and data and machine learning in order to do that you end up with this crazy kind of idea that well, an experience you've never really seen before, um, and so, I suppose so this this goes beyond just being in the stadium yeah, or absolutely. watching from home and having absolutely. perfect. You're you're talking about something that no one has ever so had access to before at an event, I suppose. Another use case, I, bec- I suppose that's the best way for us to describe what what it is is by sort of describing use cases that we will actually develop for the demonstrator. Right. Um, but in, an, another use case would be, say, you've just seen some action in a game and you can rewind it a bit and you can start analyzing and it starts giving you some specific information. Maybe you click on different devices uh, or different items and it will explain what was going on automatically. It will give you a personal narrative to say, well, that this is what this means and and then it may conf- like actually compare that with your personal play. Mm. You might give access to your Steam account or whatever, and it will say, well, you know, if actually you play like this. If you did this more, you'd be, you know, 
you're it's a similar thing or or okay. usually you would have made this decision but if you had made that decision instead like this match hmm. that's what it means but then if you were to then take that and say well that was an amazing moment i connected with that moment hmm. and you shared that on say social media you know you're a big dota 2 player hmm. i'm not a dota 2 player i've watched enough <laughs> um to understand it but you you putting that on Twitter will mean nothing to me, really. Right. I'll say, okay, great, nice suit, Joy. You, yeah. <laughs> you Dota buff. But um, but I could then click on that link, and this the Weaver platform or framework would then be able to deliver what that meant to me as a Dota fan, mm. and it would probably simplify it massively. Right. Okay. On the fly. For me, just personally. So then when I see you next, I'll be like, oh, Sujo, I saw what you posted. Mm. That really made sense. That was quite cool. And I'll probably get more into it then. Okay, I see. So so the technology you're developing isn't just for live events, for the best of the best. You can also be you and your mates trying Anywhere, to demonstrate yeah. how the uh, so strategy... So, so fundamentally, the structure is, and we've got some amazing partners mm. involved. So ESL is the, the lead partner. Um, because we're focusing on esports as the demonstrator. Uh, York University, as I mentioned, for all of their work in game design and AI machine I've, learning. I've visited um, DC over there. It's, yes. it's really impressive Incre what they do. Incredible doing. stuff. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm always a bit skeptical of academics that they actually get anything done, but I, just, I have seen what they've done, and it's, it's impressive. It's, yep. it's genuinely good. Uh, we've got Doc10, uh, who are basically... The, Doc10 operate... Uh, all the TV studios up at uh, Media City UK in Manchester. Okay. Um, so they operate all the BBC and ITV studios, um, as well as studios that are used for all sorts of TV programs like The Voice and Blue Peter and you name it. Um, I don't know how they relate, but <laughs> sort of. Um, but anyway, um, they are investing a hell of a lot of money in in uh, virtual studios and different technology which allows us to create more dynamic content i'd say um a company called rewind uh who are one of the uk's leading developers of ar and vr experiences um they've made some amazing uh projects for lots of brands uh typical one for example they made this um red bull air race game uh, okay. for red bull which you can sort of play in the HoloLens, so it overlays okay. the the map so you can see the, the pilots flying, etc. But you can also the the plane lands and you can go and see it in like real life size, mm. which is quite cool. Okay. Um then there's a company called Focal Point VR and they are working hard on trying to deliver a much better experience in a live three sixty video environment. Okay. Um, I think one of the the aspects, uh, sort of disappointing aspects of Live 360 video is the fact that that resolution just is not there. So you you feel you're back in standard definition days yeah. a, a little bit. So it sort of leads yeah, to Yeah, and obviously in, in a lot of games, mobile games particularly, you want to have good resolution to resolution. see anything. Yeah. You need to yeah. see the numbers. I'll so the numbers so they've got some really great ideas. Yeah. And they've got some good projects in the hand. Um, and we've also got a company called Cybula. Cybula are a, a, a small cloud service, mm. um, but basically they specialize in very high density computing um, and bandwidth services. And effectively, this project will use a huge amount of number crunching in the cloud, um, which would have probably given us probably a four million pound <laughs> bill from AWS. So yeah. we needed to to kind of figure something out in that space. Um, but that said, um, you know, we have other partners coming on board, um, you know, outside of the consortium uh, to help us like a 5G supplier and mm. a big silicon company, etc. cetera. Okay. Um, so I think as the word spreads, I think people are identifying there's an opportunity here. Maybe they're a platform already. So like a, a Twitch mm. or a Facebook, um, and they're already delivering experiences to an end user. 
or they're a technology company and they can actually contribute technology to this concept. Now the end goal is, that, so the project runs for two years, um, we take this demonstrator and these con this consortium of companies involved and we actually do actually create a company. Okay. And that company will effectively represent the framework that we have created over the two years. So, so the idea actually is, if you think, if you think from, you know, what does the government get out of this? What does the public taxpayer mm. get out of this? And, and really, it's about saying, well, the government have identified there's an opportunity to develop these experiences out. We've put forward, they put a competition out there. Lots and lots of companies, hundreds of companies applied for these, these grants. Um, Part of the deal is that we also contribute, so we actually invest as well as the government putting money okay. in. It's very important. It's not just free money. Then. No, it <laughs> definitely <laughs> isn't. Um, we have to work for it. Um, and then off the back of it, it creates a huge amount of opportunity, not just for one company, not just for, uh, for Weaver, mm. but for hundreds of companies all around the world, but especially in the UK, s from startups to interesting technologies, um, to different platforms, etc., who can actually say that framework there will amplify what we're doing already because it brings it all together, and we can demonstrate that with with the ESL content. Okay. Now, of course, it doesn't stop at esports. Esports is just the foundation of this because just the foundation. <laughs> well, if you think about it, probably the most disruptive industry in the the media industry right now mm. is esports because we're just changing the way everything works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the amount, the countless business models that have come out of esports, which challenge the status quo of the broadcast industry, the media industry, mm -hmm. um, the way advertising is driven, th the way th content is monetized. You you name it. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's being challenged. So, really, this is a, a huge opportunity to say, well, okay, esports can demonstrate a way forward here, mm -hmm. and we hope that the sports industry will look at this after the two years and say, this actually really works for us as well. <laughs> and we should be thinking about doing this. And hey, guess what? A younger audience is exactly what they're looking for. <laughs> so this is exactly how a younger audience would like to engage with that, that, uh, that passion, that, that, uh, that common interest with their friends. <laughs> that's that's an interesting turnaround, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of the things I was going to say is that if if you consider watching a football match from 50 years ago, yep. how different is it to what they show today? Fine, there's a bit more information on top, but really you're sitting in front of a screen yep. watching. And <laughs> yeah, and, and in the first days of esports, we, we were different because we used to go in client and we can change views and look at our own yep. views and we've kind of regressed to where sports is. Uh, so I, I suppose, well, in a way, because we, we all tune into one stream now rather yeah. than picking the player you want to you wanna follow yeah. and, and things like that, it is more convenient. <laughs> and you yeah. get the commentary well, and you, you get want all the, the production. I think that's the, oh, of course. that's the big thing esports, I suppose, over the last five years, really, as we saw the dawn of Justin TV turning into Twitch, etc., and Amazon making an acquisition is that I think that was the turning point for us to effectively c concentrate a lot more on the storylines. Yeah. <coughs> you because actually, you can create a narrative, um, which is why people enjoy watching it most of the time. <laughs> well, <laughs> th the only way you can justify telling these stories is enough people are watching it. Yeah. That's ultimately the, the issue. I mean, you think back in the day when we used to share frag CDs and you know like well I, for me it was demo files from from quake yeah <laughs> no, well, there you go <laughs> but frag, yeah frag movies on cd for me and it was you know you i what 56k modem at home, yeah and that's a lot easier to oh so to yeah get. you had to transfer the files because yeah. you couldn't do them over the internet well, usb sticks weren't really um <laughs> well, yeah but i mean h how so so how long do you think before you, we see an effect from some of the work you guys are doing before we can actually say, look, look at this cool new tech. So the, the rollout plan is that we, well, I should talk about the 
the what we're trying to achieve uh mm. what what defines success okay for the for the project um and part of uh winning the the project um with with innovate uk who were running the whole challenge um was that we had to deliver an experience to over a hundred thousand people okay um now there's multiple ways of delivering that we can deliver it at an event through a, a physical experience but ultimately we want to be delivering online now i would say that if we had if we have developed something of value i don't think it would be too difficult to reach a hundred thousand people in esports mm. um because so everyone's already got the kit so to speak um and they're, they're certainly interested in more immersion mm. um you know by the trending habits of of a younger early adopting audience um so I suppose we're going to aim to have something at ESO One Birmingham. Okay, so that's May. Yes, end of May. Wow, that <laughs> soon. So th that said, um, we, f for many reasons, you know, things delay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, and what that will be is um, the parties who are already involved um of the consortium they already have stuff that they've done already that sort of contributes to weaver as a an idea mm. so there's a, a bit of gluing to be done okay. in order to create a first experience mm. um and then we can move into something a bit more significant for potentially esl1 hamburg and then we'll go back to Birmingham and then back to Hamburg. Okay, and so May and October. Yeah. So you've kind of got built-in milestones, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that that absolutely. That, which that you're aiming which for. Which fall really na naturally with the, the whole project. Well, um, they're both Dota events, I notice. Yes, because so. Valve are handily very helpful. helpful. Valve are helpful. <laughs> That's a new one with on me. With the fact that they don't control their data. Ah, uh, I see. Valve are helpful by not getting too involved. Yes. Okay. Basically. Um, but so Dota, <laughs> Dota two and CS:GO are obvious opportunities yeah. because um, we already have a lot of work has already been done in that in that space. So look at the amazing bits of data you can get from all sorts of websites mm. like Dota Buff, for example. Yeah. Um, you know, there's and the stuff York University has already done. Um, but then, really, I think what will be interesting is has new games come about within esports? Obviously, a lot more game developers are thinking about esports at the origin of their game mm. development. Um, I think a good example of that is probably Rainbow Six. Okay, yeah. The way that they developed Siege with esports in mind which basically delivered a much better experience a lot quicker yeah whereas if you mm. then compare with say PUBG mm. which although it did probably wasn't as expected to get as big as it it has that didn't have all of that aspect mm. built in from its foundation so it took a bit it, longer yeah it was quite frustrating to try and um spectate Pro produce yeah, yeah produce a show around it because right. the tools weren't really there but to do obviously it. <laughs> they can work on that now and yeah they ha are and it's getting really good but um but then you look at the extremes of say the amazing stuff you can do with the league of legends client um you know on spectator level mm. like it's it's got an amazing set of production tools yeah but let's think about the data for a second mm. and the amazing things we can actually think about for connecting into the game servers and actually build out those experiences and storylines um you know from its from the integral aspect of working alongside a game developer in mm. its development program so that's what we're all also looking at so we i guess at the end of it we'll have this framework that is in a way open to anyone to adopt in some way shape or form um in order to continue developing out their ideas and the way they communi communicate to a community so you're going to keep it sort of open so that other people can take your ideas in and in effect them? yes i mean it it is going to be a company 
Yeah. But it's, I mean, think of um, the way we all use Facebook as a platform. You know, it's mm. got an API. It allows us to, to actually utilize it for our own benefit. Yeah. Um, and something like, um, say, Google Maps, because it, it means someone else can link to a location and you can go there yeah, easily, quite. right? So Other you can embed Google plug Maps. Plug in and things. Um, but we, so in the same way, but this will be a very much B2B le level service rather than a front-facing um, client for, right. for the public. So within the demonstrator, we'll probably have a Weaver client because we're demonstrating, but that's not in view to make that into a big um, app, for okay. example. It it would be how to best implement the framework mm. to demonstrate how someone else would implement that framework okay. to, to deliver that experience to an end user and how that all links together. All right, perfect. Well... You're probably still none the wiser. <laughs> I, well, I th I think I need to see it. I think that's what I, what I really want. I mean, there's a few things I always feel like I wish we could do better in esports. Mm. One of them is that feeling of being in yeah. the stadium mm -hmm. when when the crowd is roaring and you can feel it sort of humming around you. Especially now, while as it's growing, because I think when people see that or experience it, they will want to go and see that live and mm. experience it in the flesh. Um, but but that's what uh, we often you know even I suppose ESL in production are trying to do is like convey what it's like mm -hmm. to feel like you're there. Yeah. Um, because the first time, honestly, the first time I went to a stadium Dota event, I I, I just sort of wanted to stand around in the crowd for hours and yeah. hours. It was just so <laughs> so great to be in an audience full of people who love the I same know. thing as you. And I, you know we think back to ESL One Birmingham. Um, you know I'm convinced there was a lot of esports fans that don't really play Dota there just to, so they could experience a Valve Major, mm. you know, because... It, would, it was the it's first It's almost Valve like guaranteed Major. hype, isn't it? So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, it was a historic moment. Yeah, it genuinely absolutely. was. Um, and, you know, and the crowd played it off. Like, it was an incredible atmosphere. Um, I, I think even if the... S almost if the screens were switched off, the crowd would still be having a good time because they were just enjoying being, being there. there. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and the memes were rife. <laughs> Balloons and the DHL buggy thing. <laughs> Are you expecting uh, bigger and better for ESL1 Birmingham since you're here? We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we had some great feedback uh, from the previous event. Okay. Uh, so it certainly was on the cards for this year, as we promised. Um, there's yeah, uh, there's a few yeah, features you're we're being, working on. You're being coy. Yeah, I th I think. All right. Well, yeah, we've got to be careful because we don't want to overpromise and then deliver. But basically, it's going to be better. Brilliant. So well, we're all looking forward to, especially the Dota fans who are watching. Thanks, you, John. Thanks for joining me. It's a and pleasure. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. And uh, I think w let's have you back yeah. when when we've, when got, we've got something. Something because yeah, yeah I I'm quite excited to see it. Thanks very much. All right. Cheers. <laughs>